in American cities, migrants pouring over the border, fentanyl drugs murdering American youth. A universal identity. Forgotten. They know America has been hurting. What or who is behind this effort to unleash chaos in the people of the United States? And that we have reached our most defining turning point yet. America Fest. Do we have what it takes to make it through this? military is in the middle of what is a massive recruiting drought. Parents need to get a grip and face the fact that this generation of children is growing up in a very different America. Transgender women, people born male but who identify as female, are winning many competitions, dominating girls' track meets. The crisis on the U.S.-Mexico border is intensifying as you see time and time again where our agents risk their lives to save those that are in danger. We may have fallen far from who they fought for us to be. But we still honor what we came from. And we will fight to preserve a country where our kids can still dream big. In this land,
created by something greater than all of us. We know there will be moments that nearly break us. But it is up to us to choose. If we can turn them to be great. Because this is what America really is. Being unafraid of the challenges ahead of us. And stepping up when we are called. Wow. Welcome to America Fest, everybody. It's great to be here in Phoenix, Arizona. It's just great. 13,000 people in Phoenix, Arizona for the largest multi-day conservative event in the history of this country, everybody. Unbelievable. I got to tell you, the first of all, the Turning Point USA staff, have they not done an unbelievable job putting on this event? We had to add all these bleachers back here. It's incredible. It's unbelievable. By the way, all 50 states are represented here at America Fest. All 50 states. And 14 countries represented. Albania. Canada, boy, you got a tough one there. Justin Trudeau, he's got to go. Finland, Germany, by the way, conservatives are growing in Germany big time. I'm told that these people are here legally. Honduras, Mexico, Israel. We love Israel, don't we love Israel? We love Israel. Korea, Poland, we love Poland. We could learn a lot from Poland. I'll tell you what, they have a border. The United Kingdom, now they got to watch out if they'll let them back into their country. China is here, somebody from China, got the new federal state of China is here. Austria and Japan, 15 countries represented here at America Fest as well. I just think that's amazing. And you look around, you're here for a reason. Uh, you are here to celebrate this country, but you are here to be filled with hope. It's been a tough year, hasn't it? There's been some wins, and we'll celebrate those. It's your third annual America Fest. It's, a, it's amazing. Who here has been here for multiple years? Raise your hand. That's amazing. We're living through a top-down revolution, everybody. We're living through a revolution that's different than most others. It is a cultural revolution, similar to Mao's China. But this revolution is when the powerful 
the rich, the wealthy, decide to use their power and their wealth to go after you. Instead of building hospitals and improving our country, they are spending their money to destroy the greatest country ever to exist in the history of the world. George Soros, Lorene Powell Jobs, Mackenzie Bezos, Reed Hoffman, Mark Benihoff, Reed Hastings, and yes, the person who calls himself president, Joe Biden, that's right. The psychology is that of civilizational suicide. This country has never lived through the wealthiest hating the country. What makes this movement different is that you are here as a grassroots response to the top-down revolution happening in this country. You are here as teachers, as mothers, as students. I want our Turning Point USA students to receive a round of applause. These are the freedom fighters of America. It's unbelievable what they're doing. This is a bottom-up resistance, and it terrifies the ruling class. I get asked sometimes by the media, they say, Charlie, you know, don't you think the country is so divided, right versus left? I think there's some interesting divisions, but no, no, no. That's not the true division. The real division is Washington, D.C. versus America. Do you know what makes Turning Point USA different and America Fest different? We do this event as far as possible away from the kingdom of Washington, D.C. I think we have too many groups headquartered in D.C. I think these groups all were in D.C. and we do all this work. I inherently don't trust you if you have an office in Washington, D.C. I'm sorry. You know what the other division is? It's the powerful and the well-connected versus the middle class, versus the everyday warrior. The division in this country is versus the decent and the indecent, as Viktor Frankl said in Man's Search for Meaning. And we are living through this time where the question is still an open question. Will the people who are the sovereign in this country do everything they possibly can with this incredible blessing given to us by God to fight back and win against the elites that want to ruin it? Now, some people say, oh, you know, these elites mean very well. I think this is an important thing to talk, on, talk about for a second. The elites don't mean well when you have a wide open border and 12,000 people are coming across the border every single day. The elites don't mean well when they go after our children and they castrate our children in the, main, in the name of medicine. Our elites don't mean well when they put the leader of an opposition political party and try to put him in jail for 700 years. These elites don't mean well. In fact, they hate the United States Constitution. They hate the Declaration. And what you represent, your presence here, the largest multi-day event in conservative grassroots history, is a message that will be heard by these people. Because what they have been, what, the reason they've been able to do what they have done is that we have allowed them to do this. We've allowed them and we were too busy doing things that were very important, running our churches, running our business, growing our families. And 11 years ago, when Turning Point USA was started, I could not have imagined what God had in store for this organization. And I want to take a second here because, you know, every so often there's some, you know, person from Media Matters that writes some organization, you know, writes some article about Media Matters. By the way, God bless Elon Musk. I hope he sues Media Matters into oblivion. We'll talk about that in a second. Where they attack Turning Point and they say, oh, you know, Turning Point just does events and all this. By the way, if all Turning Point USA did was this event, that's a pretty amazing thing. Just pulling off this event is no small accomplishment. And by the way, while I'm thinking about it, Elon Musk liberating Twitter will go down as one of the greatest free speech victories in the history of Western civilization. You know how awesome it is where we can log on to Twitter and we could say, yeah, you know, Dylan Mulvaney, he's a man. Rachel Levine is a man and kind of like a creepy pervert, honestly. That January 6th is probably an inside job. It's more of a Fed surrection than anything else. And that 99% of people on January 6th did nothing wrong. That we could go on Twitter and say that, you know, George Floyd wasn't a hero. And Derek Chauvin 
was targeted in a Soviet-style trial that was anti-American and un-American? One of the reasons why the powerful are getting nervous is because we can finally speak again online. One of the main victories of 2023 is that we could say, that's BS. No, you're not going to trans our kids. You're not going to groom our children. You're not, gonna, you're not going to then call us these terrible, awful names when in reality, you're, the, you're actually the things that you're calling us. You see, as, this, as, as our ability to speak and challenge authority and challenge power grows, the likelihood of our victory increases. You see, 11 years ago, when we started Turning Point USA, we started in a very, very humble way. And I want to take a step back because I want all of you to know the incredible journey that we have been on at Turning Point USA. And I want to tell you the Turning Point story. That's one of the first pictures there. Bill Montgomery, may he rest in peace. That was at the Republican National Convention in 2012. Little did I know that God had in store that we were going to have an event nearly as big as the RNC 11 years later. It all started in this office in Lamont, Illinois. Who's from Illinois? Anybody? You know what's great about being from Illinois? There's term limits in Illinois. One term in office, one term in jail. <laughs> you know, we have uh, cell numbers for our, our governors. Dif different, not, not, not cell numbers. My grandmother passed away, uh, recently lifelong Republican. She's been voting Democrat ever since. And so, um, <laughs> all right. See, that's what's so great about Twitter being liberated. I can say all these things. Thank you, Elon Musk. Thank you. If I was streaming on YouTube right now, I would be completely gone. It all started in this office, and I love it. Apple, HP, Microsoft, and Turning Point USA all started in a garage. And so that garage right there in Lamont, Illinois, was where this started. What started as an idea, what started as a movement of one of two, with no money, no connections, and no idea what I was doing, is now a movement on 1,800 high school and college chapters across the country with 600,000 student activists, 300,000 grassroots donors. Only in America is a story like Turning Point USA possible. Only in America is it possible to say, you know what, I don't like the way the country is going, and to do something about it. And throughout the years, you know, people have said, oh, you know, turning point, you guys, uh, you're too loud. Why don't you just sit, sit down and obey? I don't know about you, but I think the people that have been running the conservative movement the last couple decades should just go be liberals, because that's what they actually are, and leave the conservative movement and allow us real conservatives to be in charge. And the numbers speak for themselves. A recent poll shows that high school boys are the most conservative that they have been in 50 years. 50 years. Now, I want to show you, because to kind of give you an idea and a picture of what we're up against, I go to these college campuses and I just, you know, I set up a table and I talk to these kids and, and I listen and some of them are pretty fired up. And I think this picture is a perfect picture of a left-wing male. You know, they want a guy with a lisp zipping around on a lime scooter with a fanny pack, carrying his birth control, supporting his wife's career while he works as a supportive stay-at-home house husband. He has, a, he has a playlist that is exclusively Taylor Swift. <laughs> and their idea of strength is this beta male's girl, girlfriend opening a pickle jar just for him. At Turning Point USA, we resoundingly reject this. We believe in strong, alpha, godly, high-T, high-achieving, confident, well-armed, and disruptive men are the hope, not the problem, in America. Now, I've got to show you this video. It's unbelievable. This is, this is the left-wing beta male in one picture. By the way, I, just, I sit down. I, this is at University of Arizona. And I, I'm just getting comfortable, and this lunatic comes up. And he perfectly, by the way, describes what I'm just saying, right? He got, he's got to get his vitamin D level up. Come on, man, you live in Arizona. Like, come on. <laughs> this is what our Turning Point USA students 
and warriors have to deal with on a daily basis. Watch this. F you, I hate you. Yeah. W would you like to have a substantive conversation or? A substantive? Yeah. A substantive? No, man. I no, think I, you're I, a asshole. Would you like to have a conversation? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't like you. I think you spread hate. I think you spread bigotry. I think you piss a lot of people off because I just, I mean, you're just an awful person. Um, I don't think you really want to debate because you're just here to piss people off and energize your crowd of racists. What uh, have I ever said that's racist? Oh, what are, can you name one thing? I'm going to hide it. Can I support Charlie? Can you name Does a that mean anything? Can you say the second thing I've ever said that's sure. racist? I think you're just trying to play a game, and I think this is obviously going to be used. What have I ever said that's hateful? I just hateful. want to fucking hate you. You're awful. Get off my camera. When have I ever said anything that's hateful? Have a nice day. <laughs> He can't say anything I've ever said that's racist, because I've never said anything that's racist. That is the American left in one picture, everybody. Lots of rage and no wisdom. No country was ever saved by a male feminist. Countless countries, though, were lost by weak beta males. And at Turning Point USA, not only do we celebrate masculinity, we believe that masculinity is the answer to so many of our problems in this country. And let's put that poll up again. The most conservative that young boys have been in 50 years. There's a lot of negative news out there, everybody. But young boys and young men are looking for something to connect to that gives them purpose that says it's okay to be a man, that says there's not unlimited genders. And by the way, let, just so we're clear, I got this from Billboard Chris. There are no genders, two sexes, and unlimited personalities. That's the way that we should all answer it, unlimited personalities. Now you might say, but Charlie, the women are so liberal. Now there's a lot of reasons for this, and I don't mean to dwell on it. But you know what, at Turning Point USA, we're doing something about it. Right there, the largest young women's leadership summit, 2,500 young conservative women. I want to show you that in America, you could start small and dream big and make a difference. I am sick of the negativity. This was our first ever Christmas event. A hundred students, eight years ago. Eight years ago, we had a hundred kids at a Holiday Inn Express in West Palm Beach, Florida. People laughed at Turning Point USA. They made fun of Turning Point USA. They said, Turning Point USA is never going to be anything. You know, Charlie, just you're a waste of time. And you know what we did? We kept our head down and we built and we outworked the competition. And what started with 100 kids, look around everybody, is now the largest event in the entire conservative movement. You can see this, the whole room is just unbelievable. Now, I know many of you are saying, but, you know, I have to send my kid to college. I have to send my kid to college. One of the ways that we are reaching students is online. You see here, we are reaching millions and millions of young people every single day. Joe Bob, Alex Clark, Savannah Hernandez. We have an army of online influencers. Our Turning Point USA digital team, it's the most dominant year online. Don't take my word for it. What does the New York Times say writing in third person? Mr. Kirk's social media posts garnered far more engagements, a combination of likes, retweets, comments, and other interactions than those of mainstream news organizations like the New York Times and CNN. Thank you, New York Times, for telling up the world that we're bigger than the New York Times. Now, you might say, but Charlie, what exactly is going viral? What, what is the content that is being seen? <laughs> so in another episode of Charlie Goes to an Arizona Taxpayer-Funded Campus, I go to Northern Arizona University, and I, I, some lunatic, Charlie, you're scripting these things. Trust me, I don't script any of this stuff. I don't need to script it. And, you know, we were, there was a whole mob there. They were screaming at us, and there were some very, very angry women that were screaming at me. And I said, okay, you know, Matt Walsh has the famous movie, and God bless Matt Walsh for it. What is a woman, right? So I said, why don't I ask this group of women, what is a woman? What is a woman? What is a, that's a stupid ass question, dude. That's a dumb ass question. What is a woman? It's not a trick question. What is a woman? You can't answer the question with the question. Yeah, define the woman without saying woman. It's a social. Does it even matter? 
you're in college paying for an education. What is a woman? You don't need media training. It's not a trick. What is a woman? You can't answer the question with the the college kids of America going hundreds of thousands of dollars into debt who think it's a trick question when you ask them what a woman is. College is a scam, everybody. You got to stop sending your kids to college. I'll tell you what. And we're doing something to solve it at Turning Point USA. Newly launched Turning Point Academy. You guys should go by the booth and say hello. Leading an education revolution for homeschool moms and parents all across the country. Turning Point Academy is leading the charge in curriculum development and teaching the teachers. In addition, at Turning Point USA, in addition to our high school program and our college program and student body presidents and our massive events, we recently launched something very near and dear to my heart. We are in a spiritual war, everybody, that is beyond just the material that we are seeing. I gave my life to the Lord in fifth grade in the suburbs of Chicago at Christian Heritage Academy. Most important decision I ever made in my life, and I encourage you to do the same, making Jesus Christ the chairman of the board of your life. I started growing Turning Point USA, and the Lord kept on blessing Turning Point, and I just, you know, would speak at a group here or there, and people would say, oh, you ever spoke at a church? Oh, not really. And then COVID happened, and I made, without a doubt, the worst prediction in the history of American podcasting. I look right into camera on the Charlie Kirk show and I say, you know all these lockdowns and all these orders to tell people to stay at home? They're not gonna last. The American church is going to lead the resistance, is going to fight back against these lockdowns because the church loves liberty. And that was one of the dumbest things I have ever said on the Charlie Kirk show. I was shocked. When the Bride of Christ, the church, shuddered in fear when they took Easter and Pentecost from us, when we saw the faithful stay at home, when we needed a revival more than ever, when suicides were going up, when alcoholism was going up, when drug addiction was going up, the church stayed and cowered in fear. And I looked around and I said, this is a time when the church should be defying these tyrants and these government leaders. They, they called strip clubs essential, and they called marijuana dispensaries essential, and they, shall, they called convenience stores essential, and yet they said the church was not essential, and so many pastors took it. And then in the summer of 2020, during Floyd Palooza, we saw churches parroting a lie from the pit of hell. When they said that America was systemically racist and that you were a racist person because of the color of your skin, and I looked around and I said, why is the church peddling this? And I took a step back. I said, ah, the Marxists have took over the FBI. They have took over our colleges and they're trying to take over the church next. And out of that, we launched TPUSA Faith. The mission statement of TPUSA Faith is very simple. We want to kick wokeism out of the American church as quickly as possible as the heresy that it is. And we got to work. We are organizing pastors across the country. And some people say, but Charlie, you know, stop being political. Excuse me. This is biblical. Esther, Mordecai, Nehemiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, all were counselors to the king. Jeremiah 29, 7, seek the welfare of the nation that you are in because your welfare is tied to your nation's welfare. It is biblical to defy tyrants. The midwives to the Hebrews in Exodus 1 were told to slaughter the, unborn, the, the, the newly born children, and they disobeyed Pharaoh, which pleased God. Disobedience to tyrants is obedience to God. Disobedience to tyrants is obedience to God. Because liberty, liberty is not man's idea. It is God's idea. And we are at a period of time, everybody, where the American church, the, most American churches are not speaking out on these issues. They say, you know, well, I, I, I just do the gospel. So do we. Do you think that the gospel includes allowing the church to be called non-essential and to stay shuttered and afraid? Too many pastors have a much bigger 
wardrobe budget than a book budget. Too many pastors are the cool kids giving a TED talk in a rock concert that is indecipherable from the world and not preaching the word. You might say, but Charlie, I, I don't like this, you know, religion stuff. Well, get over it, because this country was founded by courageous Bible-believing Christians. Fifty-five out of fifty-six of the signers of the Declaration of Independence were Bible-believing, church-attending Christians. Nine out of thirteen of the states at the American founding required you to be a Protestant Christian at the founding. In the Declaration of Independence, God is mentioned four times, laws of nature and nature is God. We appeal to a supreme judge of the universe. There has been revival after revival. Billy Graham led a revival to this country, and he also said that communism is Satan's religion. One of the reasons we are seeing the issues we're seeing in America today is because the church has been silent and the secular Marxists are taking over the nation. TPUSA Faith on a daily basis seeks to wake up the church with courage and clarity and conviction to lead a movement to push back against the secular totalitarians in America. And we are just getting started. You know, I, I love the quote from George Patton. Lead, follow, or get out of the way. When I first met Candace Owens, I said, I'm getting out of the way and I will follow you. She's a superstar. Candace Owens is without a doubt one of the most important, impactful voices in the conservative movement. Candace Owens started Blexit, and Blexit is now a part of Turning Point USA. Blexit is the largest black outreach program in the conservative movement going into the inner cities and reaching out for conservative values on a daily basis. And I believe many of you share my disgust for how the American left has been dominating the black community over the last 50 or 60 years. We need to help assist Blexit in leading an exodus for the black community away from the Marxists and the left towards conservative values and principles and away from this nonsense that has been plaguing our cities over the last 40 or 50 years. This is Candace's vision, Brandon's vision, and we're honored to carry it forward at Turning Point USA. Now, we also bring Candace Owens on campus tours. Now, we have a big problem at Turning Point USA. We can't find rooms big enough of the campus tour stops we're doing to fit all the students that want to attend our campus tours. We can't find rooms big enough. I love this short video clip. Don't mess with pregnant Candace Owens. Hello. Hi. What do you have to say to the trans students on this campus who actively feel victimized by your presence here today? Life's tough, get a helmet, man. I'm too pregnant for this. Next question. Get out of there. You know, some people say, oh, that's not very tolerant. Good. I think we've tolerated enough nonsense over the last decade, don't you? By the way, I'm kind of on the TPUSA faith thing. You know, some guy goes and he slays Satan in the Iowa State Capitol. And, you know, they say, oh, you know, you have to be tolerant. No, no I'm sorry. I'm not going to be tolerant of Satan. That's where I draw the line. Where do you draw the line? Satan, actually. That's where I draw the line. Yeah. I'm, 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 Satan, I'm, I'm not going to tolerate, actually, Satan being in a state capitol. I'm sorry. That guy's a hero for what he did, for decapitating Satan in a state capitol. And they say, oh, well, what about religious liberty? Yeah, you know, I'm sure that when James Madison wrote the U.S. Constitution, he was like, you know what? One day, I hope in many generations, Satanists can also have religious liberty too. That is just a small picture, everybody, of the amazing work we are doing at Turning Point USA. High school chapters, college chapters, dominating online, Blexit. TPUSA Faith, our Student Body Presidency Project, and everything that we're doing at Turning Point USA, including this event and Young Women's Leadership Summit and our training conferences and our campus tours, is making a sizable and a meaningful difference. But I know many of you are saying, Charlie, all that's great, 
But what happens if we don't win the next election? Now, a co-sponsor of this event is our sister organization that you're going to hear a lot of throughout the next couple days, Turning Point Action. And Turning Point Action has three very simple goals. Number one, to remake the Republican Party as a grassroots party from the bottom up and kick out the Romneys, the Paul Ryans from the Republican Party once and for all. Number two, holding our leaders accountable. It is not enough just to win elections. We need Republicans to act like conservatives, not just Republican in name only when they go to Washington, D.C., when they betray their voters. Turning point action is holding our leaders accountable. We have a scorecard. I love this. So we have a scorecard. And by the way, we downgraded the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act. They never should have voted for it. It's a terrible bill. And I've been getting calls from people. They're very angry at Turning Point Action. They say, why are you downgrading us? You know, we're doing, I said, listen, you want a better score? Vote better. I don't know what to tell you, okay? You don't get a special hall pass for betraying your voters because we have a friendship. Everybody, I don't know about you, but I've cut enough excuses for these Republicans over the last decade. I've seen enough. These Republicans need to feel the heat of the grassroots. And do you want to know the good news, everybody? The good news is that you get it, but your leaders don't. You want results. You want a border more than you want Zelensky to get more billions of dollars. You are repulsed when you see that go-go dancer show up with the turtle and truck you Schumer and demand more of your taxpayer dollars while we are being invaded on a daily basis. I find it insulting that Senate Republicans have been able to get $200 billion to Ukraine while we cannot secure the southern border. You want an end to the medical child mutilation of our children that is called trans surgery, period. You, you do not want to hear a Republican Party constantly try and protect the interests and the feelings of Democrats. You don't need Mitt Romney going on the Sunday shows saying, well, you know, I haven't seen evidence of impeachment. Excuse me, Willard Mitt Romney. I've seen evidence of impeachment before he was president. Joe Biden is a traitor to the United States, period. He is a traitor to the United States. You have worked your tail off. You've raised your kids. You've built businesses. You've paid your taxes. You deserve a better Republican Party. And that's what Turning Point Action is seeking to do. And this wins me no favors. In fact, some people said, Charlie, are you going to bring it up? And I said, I don't know. It depends. You know, you got to let the vibes feel. Okay, here we go. Ronna McRomney has to resign as chair of the RNC. She has got to resign. Do you agree? Do you agree? Do you agree? She's got to go. Well, there you go. Oh, that's nice. I'm sick of being nice. I want to win. Turning point action is playing offense. You know, somebody said, Charlie, you guys are awfully aggressive at turning point action. Yeah. About time. It's about time we deploy the MAGA movement to take over state central committee meetings. We're not here to make friends. We don't have a Washington, D.C. office. I don't care about cocktail parties. I don't care about this. Because you know what gives me strength? The hundreds of thousands of you that email us and say, Charlie, keep going that watch us on Real America's Voice and listen to us on radio, and you say, Charlie, don't give an inch. You see, the thing that the D.C. groups don't understand is that there's a new paradigm shift. The game has changed. All of a sudden, the ascendant organizations and voices can't be controlled by the oligarchs. The people that all of a sudden, you have Twitter that is liberated. You have Tucker that is completely unleashed. And I can't wait to hear from Tucker, by the way. And 
they say, well, you know, maybe we can keep on having, you know, politics as usual. You are living through the change. You are living through the change. Where all of a sudden Senate Republicans are very afraid. They say, oh my goodness, and why is Nikki Haley not doing better in the polls? And you know why she's not doing better? And they say, oh, it must be because of sexism. No, it's because of her awful ideas. That's why, okay? It's because her ideals are awful. Turning point action. Build a grassroots GOP. Give you a voice. Hold elected leaders accountable through our scorecard. And we're going to do everything we can to help win in 2024. Now, we are going to have breakouts. We are going to have trainings. We are going to have so much here at America Fest. I want you to soak it all in. I want you to be a sponge. One of my favorite sayings in the Bible. In Hebrew, it is Hineni. Here I am. It means, Lord, use me. These next couple of days, I want you to have a posture of, Lord, use me. What are my marching orders? Abraham, at the binding of Isaac, he said, Lord, here I am. Moses, at the burning bush, Lord, here I am. Samuel, Isaiah, here I am. It means, give me the orders. And God will speak to so many of you these next couple of days. It might be running for office. It might be homeschooling your kids. It might be starting a Turning Point USA chapter. It might be getting involved in the most important election of my lifetime and maybe the civilization's life. And what Turning Point Action is going to do, and we've been very clear about this, is we're targeting an Arizona, Wisconsin, Georgia to chase ballots to get low propensity voters out to engage in election month so that we do everything we possibly can to prevent the Democrats from steamrolling us again. Now, some people say, but Charlie, what about these other things? We're going to do our part. We act out of obedience, not out of the outcome. We are going to scrap for every inch. If we do our part, we need to pray that God will do his part. This is a short video that shows the plans that we have to chase ballots in Arizona, Wisconsin, Georgia. We are doing the work that I wish the Republican establishment would do, but Turning Point Action is stepping up. Watch this. Turning Point Action. We are targeting the three most critical states. There is a right and a wrong way to educate a child. Everything that's going on in public education isn't just bad, it's actually evil. And we have to provide a place where Christian families can go, their kids can know what's true. One of the hardest things I've ever done, and already the most rewarding thing that I've ever done. Join Turning Point Academy and Turning Point USA to save America, one school at a time. They teach you what they want you to learn, not what, what the truth is. You are my brother, and I'm trying to help you and awake you from the lies. Blixit's mission is to empower minority communities to pursue the American dream and shape their own future. We accomplish this through electric live... Turning point action. This state, this county. We need to do our part. Arizona, Wisconsin, Georgia, and Turning Point Action is growing like wild. And tomorrow, you're going to hear from Steve Bannon. You're going to hear from Vivek Ramaswamy. You are going to hear from the biggest voices in the political conservative movement. But these next couple of days are what you make of it. Now, a couple of the things that I want to make sure I mention. If you're a young person here and you say, boy, you know, what do I want to do for my life? Honestly, you should get married as young as possible and have as many kids as possible, period. Reject the siren song of modernity. Now, some parents are probably, ooh, I, I don't like that, you know. Uh, they should basically, you know, they should go get a job first. You're wrong, I'm sorry, honestly. We are on the verge of a population collapse in this country. Every day, I receive emails from young women filled with regret in their late 30s and they say, Charlie, I'm sobbing as I write this email because what you talk about on the show is exactly right. I have a couple college degrees. I have a great job and almost no debt. But I was told, you know, to forego having a family. But now I'm looking around and I have a lot of cats and no kids. Honestly, 
where did we go wrong where we think that your bank account balance means more than passing down to the next generation? Where did we go wrong, everybody? So I hope you meet your future soulmate. As I met Erica, the best decision I ever made in my life and the greatest blessing. And I hope you get married and have lots and lots of kids. Now, there's other people that are already married and have kids. You say, Charlie, what are my marching orders? Have that posture of here I am. Throughout the next couple of days, there will be unlimited opportunities, chances to get hired, chances to get to work, chances to hear from the biggest speakers in the movement, chances to be able to network and to have these life-changing conversations. We're going to be doing our show off, you know, on Media Row here and also for members only. We're going to be interviewing Tucker and Glenn Beck and all of that. Soak it all in. We have people that have traveled from every corner to say, you know, I want to be used. And I hope that the story of Turning Point USA, again, we started with no money, no connections, and no idea what I was doing, resonates with some of you. Because to despair is a sin. Let me say that again. To despair is a sin. And some people say, oh, Charlie, you know, it's just too, it's too hard. It's too overwhelming. It's too dark. Snap out of it. You still live in the greatest nation ever to exist in the history of the world. There is still so much to be hopeful and to be thankful for. And we have agency. The globalists are worried that you are waking up. They are worried that they're going to be held accountable. They're worried that their fraud and their nonsense is finally being exposed. And you are at the central nerve of all of that. Ask God how to use you. Find a place to plug in. I am thankful for you. I'm thankful to our 300,000 people that donate financially to Turning Point USA. I'm thankful to the pastors that are speaking out boldly despite the cost. I'm thankful to the homeschool parents that have taken that leap of faith. I am thankful to the amazing amount of you that say, you know what, I'm going to go run and become a precinct committeeman. I'm going to run and put, hold my elected leaders accountable. I'm thankful for those of you that came here and you maxed out your credit cards and you went into your savings account because you love your country so much that just sitting idly by and buying pillows, promo code Kirk, is not enough to save the country. Again, mypillow.com, promo code Kirk. I love Mike Lindell. He'll be here. I don't know when he's going to be here. He's great. And that is the change that we want to make at Turning Point. We want to change the attitude. Instead of watching TV and say, boy, I hope things get better. Instead, it's use me any way you can. I am willing. Here I am. What a blessing from God that we get to be here in this state during this time. People ask all the time, Charlie, do you think we're going to win? Do you think we're going to win in 2024? And I answer it all the same time because if I said, oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to win, then you would go home and do nothing because you say, oh, you know, Charlie said we're going to win. If I said, no, we're going to lose, you would go home and do nothing because you said, oh, Charlie's going to lose. Here's my answer is that it's wholly dependent on what we do. It is completely dependent on how we act. What they fear is a grassroots, decentralized, people-first movement. This is not supposed to be happening what you, where you are right now. 13,000 people in Maricopa County right before Christmas, gathering and hearing from top speakers, being filled with energy and enthusiasm and marching orders and dispensing all across the country to go take back communities and take back school boards and these little micro you know, sources of light against this overwhelming darkness. This is not supposed to happen. And you guys can make it happen these next couple of days. I am thankful for you. I can't wait to meet so many of you. We're going to be doing our shows. I can't wait to see what God does these next couple of days. And I can't wait to see how this whole story plays out. Because honestly, we could lose the whole country and have fun while doing it. People say, oh, Charlie, you know, we're going to win in the end. Okay, we win in the ultimate end. Jesus is coming back. I totally agree. But you know what? I do like having a little uncertainty. The stakes are high. We have only begun to fight. We are just beginning to wake up. We are just beginning to scrap, to hustle. You know, people criticize, I am, Lord, use me. God bless you guys, and thank you so much. Push yourself.
I am, Lord, use me. God bless you guys, and thank you so much. Welcome to Sleepyville, where no one sleeps deeply. The pillows are bad, and the sheets are made cheaply. But there is one family in the Sleepyville town that uses my pillow for the best sleep around. My pillows are adjustable for proper alignment, and the Giza sheets breathe so they feel no confinement. So order my pillow for great sleep refinement. Why are they so chipper? Their co-workers wondered. So much energy and zest, like they've had the best slumber. And when they peeked in the window, the secret was clear. My pillow sheets, pillows, and mattress toppers appeared. My pillow is breathable and lasts more than 10 years. It's washable and dryable and was manufactured right here. Giza cotton is what makes the softest of sheets, and the mattress topper helps support pressure points for deep, dreamy sleep. So click the link below to stop counting sheep. We want my pillow! The citizens of Sleepyville cried, but they didn't realize the family had a surprise inside. They were all given a my pillow to keep. We spent a third of our life snoozing, so let's make it quality sleep. Yeah! I got towels too. And mine are blue. So welcome to my pillowville where everyone sleeps on the pillows that align and the softest of sheets. With the support of the mattress topper, the people snooze deep. Key issues and prevailing perspectives were shaping our world. The millennial generation was on track to become the most liberal and radicalized generation in history. News outlets, pundits, and data polls everywhere declared that America was entering a new era of democratic dominance. We just aren't happy with the way the world's been run at the moment. Pushing traditional conservative values closer and closer towards political irrelevance. Out of this cultural landscape emerged Turning Point USA's grassroots activism, a movement against the time. We know that it's a problem, but we just can't treat the symptom. We, we knew it wouldn't be easy but we were determined to change the narrative. As the debt goes up, our freedom decreases, and my generation is getting handed a pretty big bill without us ever even having the right to vote. We fought to take background on the very institutions that were indoctrinating our youth by connecting with young minds, sharing conservative values, and shifting perspectives. Our efforts have paid off. Victories, progress, and changing minds. The numbers don't lie. Young conservatives were rising up. From Disney to Bud Light to Target, we've shaped cultural perceptions, but the fight to shape the future and win this culture war has only just begun. At Turning Point USA, we play offense with a sense of urgency, unapologetically educating the next generation around truth. We are gonna commit to a plan of action to take back our country and to create something bold and beautiful for the next generation. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Together, we are fighting back. Together, we are Turning Point USA. Misinformation poses a threat to our nation's health. Climate change is emergency. Democratic socialism. Codified. Everyone's right to choose. Hell yes! We're going to take your AR-15. conservative movement that that will benefit all of us 
One of my favorite Bible verses came to mind. It's Joshua 1.9. God commands us to only be strong and to be of good courage. Yes, we're a wireless provider. We're a cell phone company. We have great coverage, nationwide coverage on 4G, 5G networks. We have 100% U.S.-based customer support. We check all the boxes that say that we're a cell phone company. But here's the deal. Our mission has nothing to do with cell phones. Our mission is to relentlessly defend our God-given constitutional rights and freedoms and to do so in a way that glorifies our God. My pronouns are Bible believer, Jesus lover, gun carrier, and mama bear. We give a portion of every dollar we earn to conservative causes. And our four pillars are the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the sanctity of life, and we support our military and our first responders. And as long as there is breath in our bodies, as long as God lets us wake up to another day, we will stand up for our children, and we will fight to take our country back, and we will take America back in our lifetime. Patriot Mobile stands with you. We'd love for you to join us. Sign up today. I can't think of anybody I would rather have on a show called Uncensored than you. She is back. And she's hard to defeat. One of the reasons why they attack someone like you is you're wealthy and successful and famous. Roseanne Barr. I find your story fascinating. What a privilege it is for you to have me here this evening. I say that they are weaponizing stupidity. They are horrified that their web of power could be broken. I'm not going to bow down before them and say you were right. You've got to be so offensive to offend the most offensive thing that is on earth right now. Power wise to keep people in line to control them. Everything's a lie. Everything power tells us is a lie. Jokes are a great way to scorn power. Hour, I'm never going to give up. They're not going to get me. Greetings, humans. So nice to see you here. So nice for you to come out here. So nice for you to like know enough to be here. Thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart, I just have to bless you and honor you for being uh, emotionally and intellectually alive during this great beatdown that we're living through right now. Give yourselves a round of applause for keeping your brains working, for keeping your souls clean, for keeping your ears open and your eye, your inside eye, your inside hidden eye. The one that, like, God really sees in you and nobody else. You know what I mean? Thank you for caring about God. Thank you for caring about your country. Thank you for caring about what's right.
felt I wanted to be all encouraging and talk about stuff like that. <laughs> but, of course, I can't find my dang notes because I don't know how to work these whatever computers they got. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. I lost all my notes. What the heck? Oh, well. What do you want to talk about? You want to talk about how great it feels to, like, fight, 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 and then win. You want to talk about how great that feels? Because I can tell you about that. I can tell you about a lifetime of that fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting for something I thought was right and losing over and over and over and over and being attacked over and over and over and over like you can't even believe it. If I was to go into it, you wouldn't even believe it. It's like not even real. It's like not even real that they they said this to me well we're not talking about you roseanne barr we're talking about roseanne connor the character that isn't you because we own her and had nothing to do with you can you imagine i think of the words of patrick henry then you know I got to get that quote, and I can't find it, but because that was on my dang thing. But it's like he's rallying the troops where it looks like everything's lost, you know. You know what I'm talking about, the summer soldier. Thank you. Hey, here is my son bringing me. Thank you, son. Because, <laughs> huh? Thomas Paine, yeah. Thank you, son. No, I wanted to first read Patrick Henry. Because I think, gosh, this can't be more today, you know. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of their country. But he that stands by it now deserves the love and thanks of men and women. Tyranny like hell is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. What we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. I think this is what we're learning right now, ladies and gentlemen. It is dearness only that gives everything its value. Heaven knows how to put a proper price upon its goods. And it would be strange indeed if so celestial an article as freedom should not be highly rated. This from Thomas Paine, because it's so right now, too. I call not upon a few, but upon all. Not on this state or that state, but on every state, up and help us. Lay your shoulders to the wheel. Better have too much force than too little when so great an object is at stake. Let it be told to the future world that in the depth of winter, when nothing but hope and virtue could survive. 
that the city and the country, alarmed at one common danger, come forth to meet and to repulse it. I'm just all in for uh, President Trump. I just want to say that. I'm just all in. I'm just all in, you know. I said, I'm all in, whatever, you know. You just let me know I'm all in, because I know if I ain't all in, man, they're going to put my ass in a gulag. If he loses, I know, you know, that what they're going to do, and I don't really want to go to a re-education camp and have to give all my money away to a bunch of losers that never know how to get a job. I don't I care about them. If we don't stop these horrible communists, do you hear me? I'm asking you to hear me. Stalinist! Communists with a huge helping of Nazi fascists thrown in. Plus, wanting a caliphate. To replace every Christian democracy on earth now. Occupy. Do you know that? I just want the truth. We deserve to hear the truth. That's what we want. We want the truth. We don't care which party is wrong. We know they're both nothing but crap. They're both on the take. They're both stealing us blind. We just want the truth about everything that we fought and died and suffered to protect. We want the truth. Because we deserve it. And we deserve to have an election with paper ballots. And with proper identification to prove that you are a citizen of this country. And that the public's money shall heretofore belong to the public. <laughs> and there shall be a fair accounting of it, and where it was sent overseas, we shall have that money returned. to our national coffers. Am I right? We got a stinking uh, system of justice. We got a stinking government. It don't even know what, it's so busy with its hand in the cookie jar, it don't know how to rule people. The only thing it can do is go, well, I guess if you let the guilty out, that makes something, that does something good. Let the worst of the guilty out, because that way we can, um, you know, forgive ourselves for being racist. Or whatever the hell it is they're thinking. What are they thinking? It doesn't make any sense. What are they thinking? Why do they shut down the truth at every turn, especially the truth about, like, human health? Why are they doing that? How many people here got the vaccine? I'm 
I'm happy to hear that I didn't get it either. I was the only one in my family. I was the only one in my family, and I was telling them. I was telling them over and over, don't do it. Don't. Wh why would you? You know, why? Right? Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. Now they're like, I'm the only one in my family now that's healthy. It's terrible. I'm going to miss them, you know. I'm going to miss them. But my nieces, they're all, uh, you know, everyone in my family's a libtard, and uh, my, and they're mostly gay too, like gay and libtard. Whoa, that's a double. Woo, that's some hard MK Ultra mind control to get over there. The LGBTQ mind control and the uh, whatever the hell it is that they got people doing, you know. Well, the lesbians are always saying, you've got to cut off the boys' penises. That world that they're living in that I don't quite get. It's always the lesbians on TV saying, we are for trans operations on boys to remove their penises. Is that weird? I don't know. I don't know. I, nothing makes any sense. I can't make Heidner hair or nothing on the Internet. Are we getting invaded by Nephilim from other planets? Is that true? Or, or are we being uh, invaded by the Nazi breakaway continent down there in Antarctica? Which one? I can't tell which is true. But anyway, my uh, nieces are libtards and they are really pro the vaccine and they was all mad when they canceled that Roe v. Wade deal. You know, they was all mad and all. And I said, I go, oh, why, you know, why are you so upset? You're never going to get pregnant. <laughs> oh, you're never going to have a baby. <laughs> you're vaxxed. <laughs> you're sterile. We love this government. Uh, I believe Biden got 81 million votes. I'm probably the only person in this room. Do you guys believe Biden got 81 million votes? <laughs> really? Do you think Biden stole the election from Trump? Are you kidding? You guys really think that? Oh, my God, you don't watch CNN, obviously. You guys are ill-informed of things. I don't know where you're getting your information. But thank God you are getting information. I mean, how, you know, there's an old Jewish proverb that said, don't pee up my back and tell me it's raining. But that is what they're doing to us. They're peeing up our backs and tell us, oh, it's raining. It's right in there. You're out in the rain. Oh. Oh, you're so funny. But I did say if they do take down our president and they do something, God forbid, where they can't get our Trump in there, I said I will. I'll run for him. I'll do it. I'll do every bit of it. If, if I'm needed, I will, because... I agree with everything he says, does, and is. And, oh, my God, you guys, I love him so much, you know. <gasps> I really do. I got to, uh, oh, it was so exciting. Oh, my God. Well, I had met him before being in Hollywood and all. but So I liked him then because he was so cool and nice to me. But then since he was president, you know, I just thought, well, that's a whole other guy than the Hollywood guy. You know, he's the president. Now it's the President of the United States which carries a little something extra, a lot of something extra. So I just wanted to pray for him, you know. I really, really wanted to get in there and say a nice old Jewish lady prayer for him. Because I think that a lot of these guys in power, they do need an old Jewish woman to pray for him. They do. 
and they aren't quite getting it in the right way. They're getting, you know, something else, and they need to get the right kind of prayer on them. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Or maybe you don't. I don't care. But it's true. So, no, but so I'm like, I'm going to say a prayer, and I just wanted to lay my hands on him because, you know, I want to transfer energy of love into him because that's part of the prayer. And so when I first met him, I I just freaked out because they were letting me take my picture with him. So I ran in, you know, and I went grabbing on him and stuff. And and uh, I, I threw my arms out around him. I was all out of control and not acting right. I know you guys are shocked. You not acting right? Roseanne, what happened? But no. So I was all freaked out. And he, like, very gently rearranged my arms, very <laughs> gently, like this, you know. And he looked right in my eye and said, hello, Roseanne. So I just calmed down, you know. But then I did have the opportunity to uh, give him a hug. Can you believe it? I was able to give him a hug, and I just transmitted all the love that I felt that all of you had given me in my time of darkness. I transmitted 99% of that to our president because I know how much he needs it for what they're doing to him, which is what they want to do to all of us. They did it to me, too. They'll do it to you if they want to. You look different or say something different, they'd love to do it to you. So... I just want to say our biggest weapon is that we would love each other and uh, that we would know to um, bl- to cast the blame upward instead of laterally, upward to the people who are actually at fault for all the misery we're going through for no damn good reason whatsoever. And we can stop it, too, with our own Native intelligence, the more we talk to each other, the more we'll figure it out. God bless you all. Thank me. Thank you for having me here. Welcome to Sleepyville, where no one sleeps deeply. The pillows are bad and the sheets are made cheaply. <coughs> but there is one family in the Sleepyville town that uses my pillow for the best sleep around. My pillows are adjustable for proper alignment, and the Giza sheets breathe so they feel no confinement. So order my pillow for great sleep refinement. Why are they so chipper? Their co-workers wondered. So much energy and zest, like they've had the best slumber. And when they peeked in the window, the secret was clear. My pillow sheets, pillows, and mattress toppers appeared. My pillow is breathable and lasts more than 10 years. It's washable and dryable and was manufactured right here. Giza cotton is what makes the softest of sheets, and the mattress topper helps support pressure points for deep, dreamy sleep. So click the link below to stop counting sheep. We want my pillow! The citizens of Sleepyville cried, but they didn't realize the family had a surprise inside. They were all given a my pillow to keep. We spent a third of our life snoozing, so let's make it quality sleep. Yeah! I got towels too. And mine are blue. So welcome to my pillowville where everyone sleeps on the pillows that align in the softest of sheets. With the support of the mattress topper, the people snooze deep and wake up well rested and their deadlines they keep. So if your bed feels like rocks and your sheets feel like Brillo, you need better sleep, which means you need my pillow.
So what are you waiting for? Go ahead, click the button. I'm tired of rhyming, so please click it and save me. Please, I can't rhyme anymore. Just click that link. Stop watching this and click the link to get the best sleep of your life. Right Side Broadcasting is known for panning the crowds, showing the packed arenas, and allowing you to see the truth. We've covered hundreds of rallies, briefings, marches, CPAC, and the historic overturning of Roe versus Wade. Right Side Broadcasting was created in 2015 by our founder, Joe Seals, creating a unique broadcasting experience that allows you to make your own decision rather than force feeding you an agenda. We don't cut or edit people's words or twist them to fit a particular. Headed for not just the regional war, but I believe we're headed for a global war. Don't go over the cliff with the rest of humanity. I got to a point to when, you know, there's 120 different genders. I don't know, because I don't know where this is even coming from. Make sure they're not elected again. Make sure that you've done everything in your power, that this philosophy is flushed down the toilet. It's an honor to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I brought a little something from the history collection because I always like to do a little show and tell, but I'm going to get to that in a little while. Um, there's a lot, of, lot to cover, and uh, I have a lot of questions for you. Um, but first, everybody get up. Why don't you all stand up here? Stand up. Let's uh, I want to know why you're here today. Why are you here this weekend? Why are you personally here today? All right. I want you to know, you are most likely here, if I'm being able to hear you a bit, you are most likely here because you are patriots, want to save America. You, you don't like the direction we're going in. Maybe you're looking for others that will stand with you. You're looking for hope. You're looking for courage. Do I have it? Okay. We are a generation. We can stop the music. We are a generation. Have a seat. We are a generation that can be heroes or we can be villains. And it's easy to be a villain. Because sometimes it's hard to know the difference between good and evil. It gets confusing. To me, it's, it's gotten really clear lately. But it can be difficult to see. And you can get frustrated and tired. You can be afraid. And by not standing, you become a villain. So we really need to look ourselves and find out what's inside of each one of us that we're afraid of and conquer it. We need to know who we are and then we need to know what we're for. It's not enough anymore to be against something. I am so tired of being against the communists, the progressives, the insanity that is today. We need to be for something. We need to be for an idea. We have to know our why. Why are we here? Let me show you some things on the, uh, on the chalkboard. If we're here for freedom, let me ask you, what does freedom mean? I've tried to answer that for a while to myself. I was over in England, and they all claim to be free not to my understanding of freedom. So what does freedom even mean? Well, let's get a couple of things straight here. Left and right. In Europe, what is the left? Communism, go on, say it. 
It's communism. Communism is on the, uh, on the left. Now we're talking Europe. What is the far right in Europe? Fascism. So you have fascism on this side. But that's the European right. And what they, they go through are times when they go between fascist and communist back and forth, and hopefully they can hold themselves in the middle long enough to have a breath that they claim is freedom. This is the European model. In America, communists on the right or the left? The left. Where are fascists? Thank you. Fascists are on the left as well. What about Iran? Is that right or left? A theocracy. Is that right or left? It is a left. All of anything that is, uh, uh, Anything that is authoritarian in America, and this is what makes us different. It's not like this any place else in the world, because any place else in the world went from king or king, control or control. And so they were used to that, but that's not what we were. What is the far right in America? Freedom. The extreme right. Thank you. Anarchy. That's the extreme right. So when they say, oh, these right-wing extremists, they just want to be Nazis, they might be talking to a crowd in Europe, but not here in America. If you're a right-wing extremist, you want no government. So now where were we at the beginning? At the beginning with the Articles of Confederation, we were there. Our founders wanted a government so small that it was almost anarchy, but not quite. It was just out of the reach of anarchy. But they made the government and the Articles of Confederation too small. So we had to abolish that. And then we put the Constitution just a little farther away. And then, over time, we keep moving until we're right about here now. We are within the reach of a tyrant from the right or the left. It doesn't matter what they call it. If it's on the extreme left in America, it is totalitarianism. We are not Europe. Our Constitution is supposed to put us here, but what happens is left and right in America, they start having an argument. Here's the Democrats, here are the Republicans. Because of progressivism, they're both pretty much saying the same thing, and they're just both moving this direction. That's what we have to break. We have to go back, move them back this way. By knowing what fascism is, knowing what communism is, knowing what progressivism is. Progressivism is just the idea of moving slowly, progressing towards this side of the chalkboard. That's what makes us different. And the reason why this is happening to us is because we don't, we've never read our owner's manual, ever. We've never read it. I mean, if something goes wrong with your car, you know, you read the owner's manual, you find out exactly what to do. Guys are notorious for never reading the owner's manual. Well, I stand here today to tell you for 40 years, I never read the owner's manual of the United States of America. It's the Constitution is our owner's manual. Without that, we're lost. That's why we're having the problems that we're having now. We have lent our authority, which we're supposed to do, 
lend our authority because the power comes from the people and we find good people who are supposed to be like us who swear to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States they go but they keep failing us over and over and over again why because we didn't understand our responsibility and our role for far too long. I'm mainly talking to the people my age and above. This next generation, you are the hero. You are the generation that will come and either destroy it or fix it. And I know you will stand to fix it. I think we have treated our our rights and our responsibilities and our Constitution a little like an iPhone. We're treating Washington, D.C. as if it's an Apple store. We just bring it in and go, it's broken, I don't know what to do, fix it. That's not leading. Have you ever noticed that when something becomes very unpopular, less so lately, very unpopular with the people, what happens? The politicians follow the people because we are the ones with the power. So how much do we know about our Constitution? What do we know? We are not a democracy. We are a... Say it again like you mean it. We, a democracy is one man. Thank you. Do we have one man, one vote in this country? We do for part one. You, the one man, walks in and votes for one representative. And then that representative is supposed to represent you and do all the voting on things that none of us have the time to do. It's exactly the way our police force is supposed to be. The police, we ask the police, we hire them, we lend our rights to make sure our home is safe, our neighborhood is safe, to catch the bad guy. We loan them those rights so we can go to work, so we can go to a movie, we can do whatever it is we have to do in life, and the police officer works for us using our rights. Our police. They don't have any more rights than you have. How could they? Their rights that they are exercising to keep law and order come from, say it like you mean it, come from us. They come from us. We cannot forget our role and our responsibility and the roles of those who are supposed to protect and serve us. So they're supposed to represent us, but they don't. This is the problem in the entire world right now. The entire world seems to be on fire from Hong Kong to the Netherlands to England. Why? This is not a battle between Republicans and Democrats. They're playing the same game. One's just a lot faster than the other. We are not battling this. We are battling two things. We are battling out of control uh, aristocrats that believe that they know better. That's why everyone on the world right now is looking at their government saying, what are you doing? That's not what we want. They believe they know better than you and me. So they're doing it because you're just the little people. You don't know. It's like, honestly, it's like when you buy a lawnmower and it says, do not use on roof. Are we that stupid? We're not that, well, I think probably somebody was that stupid. But I believe, you know, survival of the fittest. If you're using your lawnmower on the roof, maybe you should go. <laughs> right now in America, 
the left says that they are fighting the tyranny of the majority of white people, of Christians, of people who believe in America, the people who have had power for so long. And by doing so, we are now experiencing the tyranny of the minority. Both of these things are wrong. And the reason why it's happening is we have forgotten what is a republic, why it's important, what our role is. We have checks and balances. We have how many branches of government? What are they? Okay. All right. You didn't get him in the same order, but I'm going to let you slide on that one. Some say there's a fourth branch, and that fourth branch is the media. How is it all four branches have failed? They have all failed because we have failed in our duty. We're not taking our Constitution, our, our, our liberty seriously. We're taking them to an Apple store. We have to pay attention. And that's why you're here. You are the first to truly start to wake up and stand up. You are the leaders of freedom and liberty in the world. We don't have shame anymore. There is no such thing as shame. You can do anything you want. You could take money from China, do blow off the belly of a hooker, and nobody says anything. Nobody cares. It's totally fine. Taking money from foreign countries, that's not shameful. I'm still proud of my son. Are you? Really? You sound to me like a crappy dad, but maybe that's just me. You can break the law and develop a virus in conjunction with China, then cover all of that up, close the world down, be responsible for millions of deaths, an economy just blowing it up in, over the entire world, telling people, taking their God-given right away to make their own medical decisions, to be able to tell their doctor, I don't, don't, I don't want to listen to them, what's your opinion? Taking that away, and yet no one has paid a price that cannot stand. Shame on you. Shame on all of those involved. The only thing we have now is brand shame. You're not wearing the right clothes. You're not part of the right team. You're for the wrong candidate. Shame on you. We need a return of actual shame. You're doing coke off the belly of hookers. Shame on you. Shame. The only way there is shame in America right now is if you believe in true justice, blind justice, limited rights for the uh, government, and merit. We're a country that was built on merit. I love coming out to the West. I was just telling my wife backstage, I hate the East so much. I really do. The East of America, it's always hot, it's always humid. There's no mountains. There's no mark of Americans saying, you know what? Get the kids in the wagon. We're going over that. I wouldn't have done it. I would have been the biggest wimp. No way. Uh-uh. Not going there. But we did it. And we didn't do it by, excuse the language, being pussies. We're Americans. There's something different about us. And we need to remember that. I would tell you that I think America has become godless, but I don't think it has. We have plenty of gods. We worship them all the time. We have fame. We worship that. We worship fortune, power, drugs, sex. We're now worshiping the planet. The planet above all things, gender, race, political power, political parties, even political politicians. They are not our gods. 
God is our God. These are false gods. And these false gods, along with hubris, will take us down the darkest paths men have ever gone down. And we will make, we will make those who dabbled in darkness in the 1930s look like rookies with our technology, our money, and our global reach. It is imperative that we know who we are and we know we are fighting not flesh and blood, but evil itself. And it always starts the same way. And we all say, oh, it'll be different this time. Oh, I'll stand up. It always starts the same way with the Jews. Let's wear the canary in the coal mine. And after they round up the Jews, they come for you. And by the time you stand up, this is an old saying, there's no one left. It just continues to eat because it is evil. And it happens by growing the government, growing the government controls, government agencies that just only answer to themselves. But remember, they're all created for your safety. Then they begin to silence those who disagree. They go and arrest those who won't go along. They shame them, make them into modern day leopards, cut them off from polite society, banking, jobs, housing. They control history and thus control the future. Sometimes they come disguised as good guys though. Sometimes they come disguised as messengers of Christ, but it is just a little askew. And those who are paying attention understand, get behind me, Satan. I understand the concept of false prophets. I want you to do me a favor. I want everybody Close your eyes for just a minute. I want you to imagine. I want to take you back to a time where we were fighting as individuals. Imagine you're living anywhere on earth in the 16th or 1700s. Life is hard. It is brutal. It is cold. It is short. You are poor, you're tired, you're hungry almost all of the time. You don't really own anything because the king owns your land. And he also controls who controls that land. It's a duke or an earl or somebody that just is not in your class. That person will lord over you. There's no such thing in this time as inventors, as we know them, people who come up with new ideas, except those people who report directly to the king. Because if you come up with a new idea, the king, the earl, or the duke will take it from you and make himself rich and leave you and your family where you always have been and where you always will be. You don't get to decide what to do, how to do it, or even where to do it. You serve the king and his royal collective. You're a cog. And make no mistake, it doesn't make a difference if you live or die. And you don't dare speak out. That's death by guillotine, the rope burned at the stake, or drawn and quartered. You dream, but all you dream of is a scrap of freedom even though you don't really even know what freedom is. The world, world overuses the word freedom and liberty now. Here's what freedom means. Opportunity. Opportunity to make your own way. To succeed or fail. To be who you are. To say what is inside of you without fear of oppression 
without fear of someone in the government kicking your door in at night, or warlords, or mass hysteria that turn into witch hunts, or the mobs in the street coming after you. It's an opportunity to live at peace, to have children and as many children or as few children as you want, to raise them as you see fit, for you are truly their parent. You can worship a God of your understanding, not the God that the king tells you to understand or the gods of the world, but a personal God that offers his love and his forgiveness, not through men masquerading as priests or kings, but he offers it directly to you, a God that grants peace and unconditional love, yet a God that is fierce, a God of all, the saint and the sinner, the God of life over death, a God of simple, easy laws. Don't cheat, don't lie, don't covet, don't worship the other gods of the world, money, power, fame, your job, status. Don't murder, don't riot, don't steal. And a few more, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your enemies. Pray for those who hate and despise you even those that want to imprison or kill you. Pray for those. And one more, give him thanks. Remember him. Remember that it was he and he alone that set you free. It was he and he alone that released you from the bondage in Egypt. It was he and he alone that released you from sin and fear of death. When he did it at the cross, you knew this. This is why you might have gathered your family or your ancestors. And they took that long journey across the sea to a new land with a new promise. A place where men and women just like you risked their lives and the lives of all they loved so that you and future generations could choose life and live free. A red-haired young man who was just over 30 scratched out a few words that changed the entire world. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with one another, requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to separation. This 30-year-old man sat there and started our declaration with an apology, with a virtue. We cannot just separate. We have to tell you, you don't understand us. We hold these things to be self-evident. That all men are created equal with certain inalienable rights and among these are life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness and that to secure these rights governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed that is the opening of a document that changed the world That's why we're here. Stand up, stand up, say it with me. We hold these like you mean it. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal with certain unalienable rights, that among these are and that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among deriving their just powers from the consent. Amen, amen, amen. Somebody give me an amen.
So why are you here today? Why are you here to make a difference, to take a stand? Are you committed to learning the things you only think you know? Are you committed to living a life, a fierce life that just never sits down? Are you prepared to live a life of fierce peace, of fierce love, a life of faith and in hope? Are you committed to standing for what is right, even if you are all alone and the world turns its back on you? Will you stand? We hold these truths to first. I would like you to watch this video. Welcome to Sleepy Bill, where no one sleeps deeply. The pillows are bad and the Most sheets are made cheaply. I commit everything in the USA. But there is one family in the Sleepyville town that uses my pillow for the best sleep around. My pillows are adjustable for proper alignment, and the Giza sheets breathe so they feel no confinement. So order my pillow for great sleep refinement. Why are they so chipper? Their co-workers wondered. So much energy and zest, like they've had the best slumber. And when they peeked in the window, the secret was clear. My pillow sheets, pillows, and mattress toppers appeared. My pillow is breathable and lasts more than 10 years. It's washable and dryable and was manufactured right here. Giza cotton is what makes the softest of sheets, and the mattress topper helps support pressure points for deep, dreamy sleep. So click the link below to stop counting sheep. We want my pillow! The citizens of Sleepyville cried, but they didn't realize the family had a surprise inside. They were all given a my pillow to keep. We spent a third of our life snoozing, so let's make it quality sleep. Yeah! I got towels too. And mine are blue. So welcome to my pillowville where everyone sleeps on the pillows that align and the softest of sheets. With the support of the mattress topper, the people snooze deep and wake up well rested and their deadlines they keep. So if your bed feels like rocks and your sheets feel like Brillo, you need better sleep, which means you need my pillow. So what are you waiting for? This evening, my name's Lisa. I'm the Vice President of Operations at Manette. Patrick Bet David's new app. Many of you already know and love PBD. He is someone I greatly admire, and I feel enormously honored to be part of his team building Manette, an app that allows anyone around the world to ask questions and get answers instantly from the people they admire the most. Now, you might think that connecting influencers with fans is already a solved problem, right? After all, it's pretty easy to slide into the DMs of your favorite celebrity or influencer or politician on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can even pay up to interact with them on platforms like Cameo, Patreon, and increasingly these days, OnlyFans. But what if you're not interested in silly birthday videos? 
What if you want content that's not the same content all the other followers on social media can consume, but something that's more personalized to you? But what if that personalized content you're looking for isn't exactly JPEGs of toes? That's where Manette comes in. Manette allows influencers to connect one-on-one -on -one with their audience over text messages or FaceTime calls and charge by the minute for their expertise. Now in doing so, Manette is doing something I think is incredibly interesting. We are democratizing access to expert knowledge and consulting to anyone around the world. Why is this significant? Because the creator economy is a $200 billion industry, with a B. And on top of that, management consulting is a $1 trillion global industry. But these are two, in fact, severely underserved markets. Because if you're somebody looking for affordable advice from someone that you admire, you have nowhere to turn. And if you are the person with advice to give, but you're not a Bain or BCG or McKinsey consultant, you have nowhere to get started. We are competing head on at Manect by empowering anybody with expertise to offer up their services as a consultant to anyone looking for advice or expertise or coaching. And rather than being a large, stodgy corporation with armies of sales reps using clunky tools like Salesforce and Workday, we are a consumer grade app that's slick, sexy, and fits in the palm of your hand. For our users, they don't have to search for answers on Google. They can get personalized answers and advice from the people they respect and admire the most. They can also stop getting their DMs ignored on platforms like Instagram and Twitter. On the next, they can actually guarantee a DM back, a text back, even a FaceTime call back by booking that influencer or celebrity or politician directly on Manect. Now, let me be clear. It is that real influencer who is answering your question, not their manager, not an AI chatbot, not ChatGPT, the real deal. We at Manect take identity and authentication very seriously. If you're an expert on Manect, you can stop giving away free advice. Now you can share a podium with the world's most admired leaders, entrepreneurs, politicians, and monetize your time by offering one-on-one -on -one consultations to your audience. Think about it. Why be a fitness influencer when you can be a fitness consultant? Why be a fashion influencer when you can be a fashion consultant? Why be a social media influencer when you can be a social media consultant? And it's working. We launched only recently and already have over 100,000 app downloads. We have facilitated 10,000 in next. That's over 1 million in transaction revenue, and we're live in 43 countries around the world. I think it's pretty clear that Manect is solving a real problem for real people living in the real world. Now, I believe the reason we have gained such strong traction in a short amount of time is that unlike Cameo, Masterclass, Intro, these other celebrity apps, all of which have plummeted in valuation and have experienced massive layoffs recently, is that our team is laser focused on solving one problem and one problem alone. Helping a person with a genuine question, looking for sincere, honest advice from someone they respect to achieve their goals. On the next, you can turn any celebrity into your personal mentor in minutes. Our users are not the kind of people who are interested in frivolous birthday videos. Our users are not looking to download yet another app to waste their time endlessly scrolling through a feed of nonsense content. Our users are just like this 25-year-old boy from New York City who is an aspiring entrepreneur in the construction industry. As you can see, he's working as a maintenance tech making 42 bucks an hour He's also serving in the U.S. Army Reserve. He's also hustling through school, trying to earn his degree. But sadly, he has a strange relationship with his father. So he can't even turn to his own dad for advice. What did he do? He downloaded Manect, got connected to Justin Waller, one of our top experts, who's a CEO of a very successful construction company. And as you can see, they've been going back and forth, and he's getting not only business, but also life advice from someone he admires. This is the exact kind of interaction that is typical on the next, and that is what makes me so proud to be building this thing with Patrick Bet David.
The neck is not about one-off conversations with celebrities. It is an ongoing series of dialogues spanning weeks, if not months, of text and video calls. Our users are average Americans in middle America who may or may not have a strong father figure or good mentors in their life to steer them in the right direction. And instead of giving up all hope, now they can download Manect, find the mentorship they need, and turn their life around. Our mission as a company has and always will be to restore the American dream and make America great again, one Manect at a time. And I am so excited for each of you to join us in that great journey. Thank you very much. Welcome to Sleepyville, where no one sleeps deeply. The pillows are bad and the sheets are made cheaply. But there is one family in the Sleepyville town that uses my pillow for the best sleep around. My pillows are adjustable for proper alignment, and the Giza sheets breathe so they feel no confinement. So order my pillow for great sleep refinement. Why are they so chipper? Their co-workers wondered. So much energy and zest, like they've had the best slumber. That would a generation that really cares about what other people think. The choice to make good decisions and bad decisions, that's not going away anytime soon. If this stuff drives me insane. During times of crisis, everybody reveals themselves and who they are. What's one of the most addicting things? Power. So nothing lasts forever. However, one thing does. Legacy, history, doing something big that's written about and talked about. They want you to do the work. Not that, but they'll manipulate millions of people into believing how noble they are. I wear your colors. I'm all in. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. Yes. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Unbelievable. What a stage, what a crowd, what an event. Yes, I'm excited to be here with you. This is the first event I'm joining you guys for Turning Point USA with Charlie Kirk. Uh, it's great to get a chance to meet some of you guys here. We'll do a podcast in a few minutes, I think in about 45 minutes and an hour. We'll be doing a podcast. I want to start off by saying a couple different things. One, do you guys know what's special about 2032? Does anybody know what's special about 2032? It's the first year Charlie and Erica can run for office. Okay? Who likes the sound of that, by the way, right? Erica comes up to me because the last time they were in the office, I, I got uh, uh, their kids some Legos. Who loves Legos? Yeah, I love Legos. Anybody loves Legos? I'm 45 years old and I still love Legos, right? But I got them Legos of uh, the White House. I said, uh, Erica, today she comes up. She said, I just want to let you know, thank you for the gift. The Legos, I said, yeah, I just sent you an uh, example of your future home one day. That's where you guys are going to be living. But that was fantastic. I just love Charlie's fight. Oh, my gosh, I love Charlie's fight. Right when him standing up, what he's doing with all these young folks nationwide and now 15 different countries from every state here. We have representing, and then we have Glenn Beck here speaking, which to me, in my opinion, Glenn Beck may be, well, we got to call him a different name moving forward. Glenn Beck is now Glenn, a.k.a. William Wallace. So everybody on Twitter, wherever else you're watching, moving forward, we'll call him William Wallace. I think he's one of the best teachers in the game. And then Lisa earlier just crushed it, doing a great job representing Manek with us. Very proud of her. So I got a few different things I want to ask you. I got some points I want to talk to you about. I got four points I want to make to you by the time I'm done with my message here. One of them is the following. How many of you guys would love it if you and I had the manual and the playbook of what our enemy used against us? Who would love to have that? Who would love that, right? Okay. I'm going to share with you two enemies we all have, which we'll talk about. I'll break that down for you. How to go about it with this enemy. And then the challenge to everybody at the end of the talk that I have for everybody here. What you do with it is completely up to you. But I do want to give everybody a challenge here by the time we wrap up. So. Having said that, my message, my story, 
Can you make some noise if you're a student today? I'm just wanting to know the audience. Who's a student today? Okay. Well, let me, let me be more specific because somebody may be 63 years old saying, I'm still reading books, I'm a student. Make noise if you're under 25 years old. I saw a couple 40-year-olds making noise, but it's okay. We can feel that way. Make some noise if you're 25 to 45. Okay. Just so anybody 45, exactly 45. The best age you can be, by the way, is 45. It's proven. It's going to be 46 next year, but right now it's 45. Make some noise if you're proud to be above 45. Wow. By the way, very, very revealing on why that's going to make me call a quick audible on my message. To those of you above 45, unbelievable to have as loud of a chant that you had here as well as below 25. We'll talk about you guys in here in a minute. How many of you have no clue who I am? Make some noise you have no idea who I am. So I can give you a look. You don't know who I am. You, how many of you listen to PBD podcast? Anybody? Okay. Who watches a little bit of valuetainment? More PPD podcasts. It's okay. It's okay. So let me give you a little bit about my background. Born and raised in Iran. Um, I was born during the revolution, October 18, 1978, in Tehran, Iran. When my uh, mother's water broke, my dad's taking my mother to the hospital. There's curfew. He gets held up. He has to show that my mom's pregnant with me, goes to the hospital. I'm born. Next thing you know, three months later, the Shah's in exile. We stay. Iran's chaotic for the next 10 years, 10 and a half years. June 2nd or 3rd of 89, Khomeini dies. Six weeks later, my mother said, we can't stay here anymore. We escaped because my mother was afraid of me serving in the military in Iran. My dad's like, listen, do what you guys got to do. You guys got to go. We go to Germany. We live in a refugee camp in Germany, in Erlangen, Germany. Had a great time for about a year and a half. And we come to the States, November 28, 1990, a day I'll never forget when we're crossing, we go to New York. The moment I land in New York, I'm walking around in the airport, I'm looking for gremlins, I'm looking for Rocky, I'm looking for all these guys. I'm thinking America's like this dream of mine, right? I watched Rocky for a few hundred times in Farsi. A little weird, but I watched it in Farsi a few hundred times. And then finally come here, we live in Glendale, California, not Glendale, Arizona, Glendale, California. Any, any Californians here, yes or no? By the way, any Texans here, Texans? Any Floridians here? Here's, here's what I can tell you. If California and Texas could have a baby, it's Florida. That's why I live in Florida now, just so you know. I've lived in California, I've lived in Texas, and I live in Florida, and I love it in Florida. But I still have a, I love the other two states I lived in as well. Let me continue. So I go to high school. I get out. Um, I decide to join the Army. I go to the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault. Thank you. Anybody else here served? Who else served here? Anybody served? Thank you for your service. One of the best decisions I made in my life. I end up getting out of the Army. When I get out, it was because of my citizenship date I had, June of... Uh, 1999, I become a U.S. citizen. So for some of you wondering if you can join the Army with a green card, you can, because I was in the Army with a green card, just so you know. Some people just freaked out a little bit, but that's what happened with me. So I get out, and I don't know what I want to do. At that time, I was a bodybuilder. That was my dream. I was going to go be Mr. Olympia, go into Hollywood, marry a Kennedy, be a governor. And then <laughs> I, I met a girl named jean Vierre who introduced me to Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. Uh, day before 9-11, I start working at Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. I get my series 766, 31, 26, Life and Health. I fall in love with the financial industry. Um, next day, it's 9-11. I leave Morgan Stanley. I go to Transamerica World Financial. I'm there for about seven and a half years. I see what's going on with the marketplace. And then in September of 2009, start our own insurance company and then, you know, it takes off. But I want to tell you a couple things that happened in 2009. March of 2009... My wife and I, we start dating. I've kind of found the industry I want to be a part of. I love numbers and I love the financial industry. I love people, so that's a great combination. I found the girl that I think I want to marry. We've been dating now for four years. We've known each other for about five and a half years. 
I am making money. I've heard the magical words from my parents, I'm proud of you. But at this point, I'm realizing this thing cannot be about money. And I'm trying to figure out what I need to do. So I bring a handful of people I respect a lot. One of them was my pastor, a couple of the gentlemen that I had. I said, listen, I need your help. I need to find my purpose. There's no way in the world God put me here to just go make money. I want to find out exactly what that reasoning is. This is too chaotic and a strange life I've lived. Why did you do this to me? I want to know. One of the mentors takes me to an event at Miramar Hotel Santa Monica uh, with Claremont Institute. Anybody knows Claremont Institute, Larry Arn, all those folks. Anyways, I don't know whether you like them or not. It was a good event for me. I go to this event. A man named George Will gets up there and speaks, talks about how lawyers are ruining America. Any lawyers in the room? If you know, some of you guys are ruining America, but that's a whole different story. I don't want to digress. And then afterwards I meet and the gentleman that introduced me says, hey, you know, George, Patrick wants to know what to, he should commit his life to, what purpose? He says, where are you from? I said, Iran. He says, why don't you go study why so many people around the world come to America? Why do we only call America the American dream, no other place? I leave and that becomes my obsession. That's March of 29th. Three months later, my wife and I get married on June 26th of 09. Three weeks, three weeks, by the way, our youngest daughter was born June 26th on our wedding day, which is kind of like, it's no longer that necessary. Now it's her day. It used to be our anniversary, now it's her day. Three weeks later, we put an event together. I'm on fire at this time. We put an event together at JW Marriott called Saving America, Doing the Impossible. I'm dressed as a Middle Eastern George Washington, okay? Unfortunately, you can find this picture on Google. That's the disappointing part. My wife is dressed as Lady Liberty. She looks like Lady Liberty because she's from Texas. When we got married, it was kind of funny because I'm from Iran and, and she's from Texas. And there's about 500 people at the wedding and, and all the blue eyed, green eyed people on one side, they're not dancing. All the hairy people on the other side, you know, why are you laughing? All the hairy people on the other side, they're not getting up. Finally, one of my friends that night, who's one of my groomsmen, was sponsored by a couple guys you may recognize, Jack and Jose, and he spent a little too much time with these two guys. If, if you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. If you don't know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, okay? So he gets up and he says, look, some of you guys are worried. You don't want to dance. You're wondering if this marriage is going to work out or not. Trust me, I'm worried as well. When they first started dating, I said, why would a girl from Texas, nice little girl, why would she marry this big, scary looking guy from Iran? Why would she do that? He says, I finally figured out what these guys have in common. They have two things in common. Everybody's waiting. Texas, Iran. They both like oil and weapons of mass destruction. It's going to work out. It's going to be all right. Okay. Obviously a terrible joke, but everybody laughed. We got up, we danced all that. It was amazing. Anyways, so we put this event three weeks after we get married. I got a 40 foot Mount Rushmore on the stage, 40 American flags. I bring a speaker to talk about the Star Spangled Banner. Another one to talk about capitalism. Uh, the son of Ronald Reagan, just to tell stories about Ronald Reagan. Just tell stories. That's all I want you to do. Tell stories about your father, right? Three months after that, we started an insurance company, and we grew that insurance company from 66 agents to today we have roughly 50,000 agents nationwide, a few hundred offices nationwide. And we've been uh, 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 very grateful last year where we partnered with a great organization called Integrity. I've been fortunate enough to do a lot of incredible things in my life, travel, dreams that don't make any sense to me. I'm married today with four kids. Life is amazing. God's been unbelievable to me. If there's anything in my life I've been talking a lot about lately when I'm going around is I'm finally openly talking about my biggest fear I have in life. I don't fear a lot of things. If there's one thing I fear in life, and I can't even tell you how unbelievable a fear this is, I fear losing God's favor. It is the biggest fear I have. And by the way, I'm not, I, the only reason I share that with you is because when I look at that flag, I think America, for God knows how many years, has been known as the greatest country in the world. It has forgotten and no longer fears losing God's favor.
We are now afraid to pray in schools, but we're okay with teaching all these other things to our kids. I'm not okay with that. I'm a pretty easygoing guy. We can sit down, tell jokes, pull a couple pranks, play domino, play backgammon, talk sports, talk politics. If you cross the line, and impose yourself on my kids, you're going to meet a very different human being, period, right? And I'm convinced many of you feel the same way as well. Having said that, let me talk about a couple different things here when I say to you about the enemy. If I were to ask you right now, who do you think is the enemy of the state? Who's the number one enemy we got in America today? I want you to scream it out. Tell me who you think it is. Who do you think it is? Say it. Say it louder. Who do you think it is? All right. Let me give you a few names and tell me if you agree some of these guys are enemies. Would you say mainstream media is one of the enemies? Would you say the establishment is one of the enemies? Would you say those on the outside, China, Iran, whatever other countries are, who hate what America stands for, one of our enemies? Yes or no? Would you say some of the people on the inside that hate what America stands for? Yes or no? How about our educational system and all those unions? Are they one of our enemies? How many more you want me to go through? I got a list of them here if you want me to go through. LGBTQ indoctrination. I can talk about Larry Fink, central banks, defense contractors, lobbyists, rhinos. I can continue. Hollywood, entertainment, globalism. Keep going with all these names. However, at 28 years old, I made a decision in my life. I was constantly asking this question of why I'm here and what drives me. Is the goal in life, Patrick, to be a millionaire? No. Is the goal in life to be a billionaire? No. And by the way, I'm talking about the pinnacle. I want to know what's the top of the top. What is the one thing worth me giving my entire life to? Is it me wanting to be a great father? Number one, no. Is it to be a great husband? No. Is it to be a great capitalist? Not the number one. Is it to live a fulfilled life? It's not the number one. Is it to be funny, fun, all that stuff? Not number one. And I kept going through it. All that stuff is great, but it's not my number one. See, what's crazy is a lot of us in here have a lot of people we love. And a lot of you in here have a lot of people that love you. Everybody has that. But there's a very big difference between being loved and being respected and being admired. One can love their husband, but maybe they're saying, man, he no longer lights it up like he used to. He used to work and drive and go and get after it. He was fearless. He used to be like that 15 years ago, but all of a sudden he lost that fire in his eyes. What happened with that? But she'll never tell you. She admired a man of 15 years ago. Your parents may love you, but your father, when he looks at you, gives you a look and says, why doesn't my son give his best? I wish I admired my son, but he loves you. There comes a point in your life where you got to say, I want to be loved and I want to be admired. There was nothing in my life more important than being a leader amongst leaders. And when you when you realize if the number one is being a leader amongst leaders, does that mean you need to be a great father? Absolutely. Does that mean you need to be a great husband? Absolutely. Great wife? Yes. Great capitalist? Yes. Great contributor to society? Yes. Have a backbone to stand up? Yes. Because the number one pinnacle in life is what? Being a leader amongst leaders. You know who's looking for that right now? The man upstairs. I'm convinced the man upstairs looking down right now saying, what happened to this incredible country that loved God? And, and they would constantly talk about it. Man, I am looking for a new generation of leaders to rise up. I believe God is looking for the next generation of flag carriers. And to be people like that, you have to be leaders amongst leaders. By the way, this is a tough decision for us to make. Because we don't like that kind of responsibility. We don't like that kind of pressure. However, what clip did Glenn Beck play at the end? Why do you and I watch that movie and get emotional? Why do you watch... The movie Gladiator, and we get fired up when we watch Gladiator. Why do you love that scene? Why do you love the scene when he gets up and he turns around? Show your face, Gladiator. And he takes it. Why do you love that scene? Because deep down inside of you, I don't know what it is. He put something in us 
that we want to be leaders amongst leaders, but we're scared sometimes. And that's okay. It's okay to be scared at times. But someone's going to wake your ass up every once in a while. If today that's me to you, it was somebody else 15 years ago, I don't have a problem being that person. FYI, some of you guys are saying, Pat, I consider myself a leader amongst leaders. That's great. But everybody came to this event with a different outcome. Some of you came here, quite frankly, let's just say it, is because for whatever reason, Turning Point USA attracts a lot of young, good-looking people. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like, oh, you know, I hope I meet somebody. I hope I meet somebody. Some of you came here because you came with your granddaughter or your grandson or your daughter and you're wanting your kids to be in an environment that you can trust for them to become great leaders. You're hoping something happens, fire, fires lit under your kid. You're hoping that happens to you. Some of you guys are here it's because it's you. You're like, man, I'm looking for something to get me to the next level. I want to wake up and do something big with my life. I feel like I haven't had it for a while. Everybody's got a different outcome. But we just talked about the first enemy. The first enemy is what? We love talking about outside enemies, right? Which is what? Yeah, that globalist. Yeah, mainstream media. Yeah, this. Yeah, that. No problem. They are enemies, but they're only one of the enemies. But the only reason they win is because of the second enemy. Let me unpack the second enemy for you. Here's the second enemy. I'm convinced the second enemy are three communities. Number one is the tolerant Christians are one of those enemies. Good people, sweetheart, you've learned 20, 30, 40 different scripture. Oh God, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, John 3, 16. Oh, mm, Proverbs, yeah. It's okay, they can also, it's okay. What interpretation do you have of who Jesus was? Do you think Jesus was a guy that was going around saying, yeah, yeah, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay? Or do you think he stood up and he managed expectations with other people? Are we confused in these churches? Are we confused? So to me, the number one enemy is these tolerant Christians. They're not being called out. They're not being called out. I go to so many different churches. Well, why is donation down? Why is this down? Why do you think it's down? FYI, we can sit there and be upset about Muslims as much as possible and act like we're victims. You know what they're doing? They're simply having more kids than you. Why are you upset? So can you imagine if somebody says, well, these Muslims, look how they're growing so fast. Just 50 years ago, we were three times the size of them. And now they're the same as us. And in the next 30 years, they're going to be running Senate and Congress and governors. Why do you sound like you're scared? Why don't you go have four, five, six, seven, eight babies? Why, 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 do you, why do you stop saying lines like the following, where it's like, well, you know, my husband and I, we want to spend five years together, and then at 35 years old, we'll think about having a kid, because you know it's a lot of work having a kid. What do you think is the biggest juice of life? You think it's a nice house? You think it's a nice car? Or you think it's having a kid? Oh my God, one of the greatest gifts we have, if you're able to do it with health. I don't want to impose this on some people who God won't even help you have kids because you're wanting to have kids. There's so many people that want to have kids that can't. But if you can't have kids, go. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go. Raise them with the right values. Be tough on them. Challenge them. Love on them. Spend some time talking to them about all the things that's taking place in America today and the world. Don't be afraid of it. Because if you don't do it, the school's going to do it. And then one day you're going to be like, how the hell did I lose my kids for a decade or two? Because you didn't talk to your kids about all the things that they were facing. So number one enemy. On the other side are tolerant Christians. Let me talk about the second one. Are the do your thing libertarians. Look, man, you know, as long as you do your thing, I don't care what you do. You want to smoke weed? Go ahead. You want to go do this? Go ahead. Go do shrooms if you want to. Do your thing. Now, I, I don't think this is a libertarian community. But libertarians also have been saying, do your thing, do your thing, do your thing. And guess what the schools are saying? Well, thank you so much. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to do our thing with your kids. Thank you so much, libertarians. You guys are awesome. You guys are so awesome because you said, do your thing, and we are. You're not running for the board in school. We are. And we control what's being taught to your kids. We love do your thing, libertarians. They're ruining America. Number three, you know this next one? These are the, now I'm going to tell you this in a different angle. These are the, 
And, and by the way, it's not a lot of the crowd here, but there's a lot of them out there because I know some of you guys who you are and what you're doing. It's the lazy, scared, rich conservatives. Let me explain. Before you're offended and you go slash our tires outside and I can't make it to my hotel room. You know what this community is? You know, it's the community where it's kind of like, no, look, you know, we can't tell people what we believe in because we may lose those guys over there that invite us to the cool parties. We can't tell them what we believe in. We can just say, yeah, you know, we kind of this, this, that. Wishy-washy? What? What do you stand for? What, what, is you, what do you stand for? Do you have a backbone? What do you stand for? By the way, while you're sitting there investing your money in all these other things, Mark Benihoff, Jeff Bezos buys WAPO. For how much? $500 million. That's nothing. Time Magazine, a few hundred million dollars. Nothing. LA Times bought for $500 million. Nothing. I may be out by 50 million bucks, but that's nothing to many of the rich Republican billionaires that are in the room or out there. You mean to tell me you couldn't buy LA Times? You mean to tell me Forbes family sells Forbes to a Chinese company that owns 90% of it and they announce the International Woman of the Year, Hillary Clinton? What? What are we talking about? So you can't go buy Forbes? You can't go buy Fortune? Why would we be these, buy these types of companies? Because media is communicating the messaging to people. You gotta pick up some of these platforms. Well, no, but it's the rate of return. No, it's also a portion of your money needs to be invested in things that's not about a rate of return. It's about what this country's done for you. You gotta go and buy some of these platforms so we can persuade and build the next generation. So now, these two enemies, we know. One of them on the outside, great. Second one is telling language when we're going out there. Let me continue. Next part. Next part. I think we have to do a better job selling our values and principles. Charlie does a great job selling it. I think he's one of the best. He's fantastic. Ilana is doing it in his own way. Others are doing it in their own way. We need to get better at selling some of the values and principles that we have because our values and principles are proven. The way we raise kids, the way we raise communities, the way we built, you know, U.S., a brand spanking new startup country, 1776, into the greatest country in the world. How do we do this? China had been around with a couple thousand years. Iran been around for 2,500 years. We do a brand spanking new startup called United States of America. Yes. Our ideas are proven. Everybody else works for our companies. They work for our companies. Walmart employs nearly 3 million people worldwide. I think 2 million is here, another million is outside of here. We create jobs for others. We need to tell that story better. We're getting better, but we're not there yet. Now, a couple other things. How many of you love bullies? Who loves bullies? How many of you love bullies? How many of you know there are certain bullies right now that we're dealing with? Yes or no? There's two rules I got with my kids when it comes down to bullies. We don't bully other people but we also don't get bullied. However, um, COVID was obviously a terrible event that took place. One life lost is one too many, okay? However, let's set that aside. COVID was also maybe one of the best events that took place if you look at it from the perspective of knowing the playbook the enemy wanted to use against you. So, they all of a sudden went like this with their hand and they were shameless about it. And if we saw their hand and we don't do anything about it, whose fault is it? So now here's a mistake we typically make. If you're a Christian,
I'm with Wuhan. I simply want accountability. Because without accountability, you know what you're telling the world? You know what you're telling the world when there's no accountability? It's like if your kid does something and there's no punishment, guess what you're telling them? You can do it again and again and again. That's what we're teaching everybody. There is no accountability. This concept about being afraid of some of these companies going out of business, they need to go out of business. Anybody knows what a zombie company is? A zombie company is companies that only survive by borrowing money. If they don't keep borrowing money, they don't pay operating expenses or nothing. So they go out of business if they don't borrow, okay? In 1997, only 1% of companies in America were zombie companies. You know what the number is today? 25%. 25% of companies in America are simply surviving by constantly borrowing money. Let them go out of business. Let them go out of business. Let the right people operating, operating the right businesses. We need to kind of talk about some of these companies that are not doing it right. I'm sorry, you're not a good operator. Go work for the other guy. You're not meant to be a founder. You're not meant to be a CEO. You're meant to be an executive in the other guy's company. You're still going to make money, but it's a different mindset to be an operator. That's the part of accountability. No, nope, but we're afraid for people to fail. The whole concept about capitalism is four things. Freedom to buy, freedom to sell, freedom to try, and what's the last one? Freedom to fail. They got to fail. If they don't fail, there is no capitalism. So we have to sit there and say, listen, these guys that are making it, that's totally fine. But watch this. Let's talk about these bullies. The one thing about bullies is the following. What most people don't realize about bullies is, so imagine you talk to a bully, and here's what a bully tells you. If you do that, I'm going to whoop your ass. If you do that, I'm going to call all my guys to come after you. They're around the corner. And you're like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Please don't do anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm just going to, I'm so sorry. And then all of a sudden, sometimes you tell the bully the phone. You say that one more time. I'm going to get the guys. I got 20 people around the corner waiting to whoop your ass. And you just say, call them. Call them. What do you mean? Matter of fact, let's go find your 20 guys. Let's go together around the corner. You ready? Let's go. Well, 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 what do you mean? But maybe they're not there right now. Because you're bullshitting me, guy. There is no other person behind you. Your argument isn't that valid of an argument. Bullies aren't as tough as people think they are. But they're very good at selling you on that concept. They're very good at convincing you they're powerful. They're not. So watch this. What method do they use? So why are so many people scared to sell their values and principles to others? Here's why. The game plan they use is shame. Glenn talked about it briefly earlier. They'll shame you. So people are like, well, what if they find out that, what if they find out that I got a DUI 22 years ago? And what if they find out that I filed bankruptcy? Then what if they find out? 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 And then all of a sudden you'll catch yourself living this life. You know what this life is? Handcuffs and shackles because you're afraid of shame. And you have this notion in your life that you're supposed to live a perfect life. I'm not living a perfect life. I'm trying to live a magical life and doing my best to improve. But by them doing this to you, and the reason why what, what that is he said, what do you want to shame me with? Is he said, what do you want to shame me with? Go ahead. Boom, he put it back on them. 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 Like, what am I going to do with this guy? Character assassination, financial assassination. What's left in this playbook? We've done everything to this guy. And he would stand up right there. And some people started realizing, maybe I need to just stand up. So they'll use shame against you. They'll use guilt. They'll use apathy. They'll use grief, anger, distracting you, judgment, constantly, every one of those things. And you're not doing it. So you're not doing it. So imagine if there's a press conference. Let's just say you're running for office. I'm going to paint a picture to you. Watch this one here. Um, so... All this stuff that's going on, they're embarrassing you. Every article, 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 article. Next.
It's because he has this idea of walking on eggshells. He has to be perfect. And guess who doesn't relate to him? The American voter. I'm sorry to say this to you. Some of you guys say, I don't know who you're for. We have some candidates that walk on eggshells. They just want to be sold as a perfect candidate. I remember one time I want to fly back with Bill O'Reilly. This is 2012. This is when he was doing the stuff with Dennis Miller. I'm going from Burbank to Vegas for a convention. Bill O'Reilly sitting right next to me. I'm like, Bill, what happened with Romney and Obama? He said, I'll tell you a story about what happened with Romney and Obama. So what's that? He says, we called both camps and we said, guys, you're not going to get elected if you don't come on Fox. And Romney's camp said, no, they didn't come on. But Obama's ca uh, campaign manager called me back and we had a conversation to get in, conversation to get in. And says, what did the campaign manager say? He says, the campaign manager said, it's done. Bill is like, no, it's not. If you don't bring Obama on the show, you guys are not winning. He says, it's over. He says, what do you mean it's over? He says, well, he had a shot. The shot was on the second debate. Do you remember when Obama went down on the second debate and Romney came up? He says, the third debate, apparently his marketing team or whatever, his campaign manager told him, you're not getting the single woman. You were a little too tough on Obama, and you were a little too tough on Obama, and they don't like it. Change your approach. He says the moment he fell for those consultants, he failed. It was over with. You know how many candidates we got that they're listening to consultants? You know what America wants to know about? What do you stand for? Tell me what you stand for. The consultant's not running. What are you running for? I like talking to Vivek because I feel like Vivek's talking to me. I like talking to certain candidates because I feel like they're talking to me. You talk to the 17 points to hit. Here's the script. 17 points to hit. Here's the script. Here's the line. Here's the this. Dude, we don't want a robot as a president. We want a real human being that I can relate to and I can say, this guy's going to get it done. I'm not expecting perfection out of you, but I want you to be a leader and get it done. That's what we want as Americans. At least that's what I believe we want as Americans. So, if the standard you're willing to take here tonight when we leave is wanting to be a leader amongst leaders, there's a couple things we've got to be thinking about. Number one, anticipation. 2024 is going to be very chaotic. It's going to be weird. There's some weird movies coming out. How many of you guys saw the recent movie, Leave the World Behind? And what are you Am I watching a movie or is this a documentary realistic thing? And then I'm seeing Mark Zuckerberg just spent $100 million building a house in Hawaii with a nuclear bunker. What does he know that the rest of the world doesn't know about? Talk about the timing. Oh, accidentally, coincidentally, a week after that movie comes out, a new movie comes out. What's the name of that movie? Civil War. Civil? Huh. Leave the world behind. Our power grid in America hasn't been updated. 75% of it hasn't been updated in kind of 50 years. And, and you're kind of talking about that. Then you're pinning whites against blacks. There's a line in the movie that says, Dad, you know if something goes down, we can't trust these white people. I know that's something both you and mom agree on. Why do you put that line in the movie, Barack? And you were helping with the script. Why would you put that in the movie? Why would you put that? Barack, weren't you the same guy that gave a talk at the DNC in 2004 about bringing people together? What happened to that guy when he gave that speech? By the way, there's something that our brand by Tim and PBD Podcast is slightly different in. Here's what it is. I like talking to everybody. I like talking to everybody. Someone goes, I can't believe we talked to that guy. I'm like, dude, if you like, I like talking to anybody who knows. Anybody's ever seen Anthony Weiner on our podcast? Yes or no? Was that a weird podcast or what? How many of you guys saw Tubin on our podcast? We enjoy talking to him. How many of you guys saw Cuomo on our podcast? How many of you guys have seen Sammy the Bull Gravano on our podcast? How many of you guys have seen, I don't know, uh, uh, Alex Jones on the podcast or DeSouza or, uh, or Kobe Bryant or I don't know, all these, I like talking to everybody. I feel like the, the role, everybody's playing a different role in this battle we're going to face in the next decade, two or three. We're all dressed in different uniforms. We all love America, but we all are playing a different role. Everyone's got a different superpower. Can we sit down and talk? Can we do that? I read a book with Tip O'Neill and, uh, and uh, uh, Ronald Reagan. They could talk, right? Can we sit down and have a conversation together? Yes. Okay. Tell me about your upbringing. Tell me about your upbringing. Interesting. You guys have that in common as fa with fathers. Y yeah, I guess we do. What sport do you like? Oh, no shit, you too. You guys have that in common. 
An hour later, do you realize you guys agree on 73 different things? What do you disagree on? Politically, five different things? Let's hash it out and debate. It's okay. Some like Red Sox, some like Yankees. Let's debate it out. Some like Lakers, some like, well, today you can't like the Lakers, but some used to like the Lakers. Don't get me started. I don't want to go there. But you get the idea what I'm, I'm trying to get people talking to one another. But by the way, what happens before a husband and wife get a divorce? What's the easiest sign? What's the easiest sign that a divorce is around the corner? What is, they stop talking. And if you don't talk to each other, what do you not do at night? Back to back. You know how hard it is to have sex back to back? Not a lot of gifted people like that, but you can't have sex back to back. That was a little bit mathematical and scientific. If some of you guys got it, good for you. If you didn't get it, God bless you, it's going to be all right. I want to talk to everybody. I want to sit down and talk and say, let's talk. I disagree. You disagree with me? Let's start the discussion, okay? A, a part of the challenge is that we also feel we can only talk to people that agree with us. How does that make any sense? If we only talk to people that agree with us, then, then what opportunity are we given to baptize people in the name of whatever the United States of America? If we're only going to talk to people that agree with us, where is the debate? How are you getting better? How am I getting stronger? We've got to sit down and have some of these conversations. Maybe this is not a message some of you guys agree with. I'm comfortable with that. I want to do that. I didn't say don't be paranoid. I didn't say be naive. If you have the ability to reason, and manage expectations with people in your life, you can call out BS and still have a respectful conversation with somebody. Who's ever seen the movie Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze? Who's seen the movie Roadhouse? How many guys love the movie Roadhouse? Okay, man, I love the movie Roadhouse. You know what's one of the best scenes in a movie? It's when the, uh, all the, all the, what do you call it? All the security guys, the, the bouncers, are sitting there and they're talking to Patrick Swayze. And what does he say to him? Ask him to leave but be nice. If they try to do this, ask him to leave, but be nice. What if he calls your mama? Is she? If you know the movie, you know what line that is. Whatever they do, just be nice. We cannot, unless if you're Anthony Weiner and you disrespect, then we don't have to be nice because you cross the line. But if you come to me and respectful, let's have a conversation together and see what we can do. That's half the battle. If we don't talk to each other, we're going through a divorce very soon. And if you're a leader amongst leaders, you don't fear talking to people whom you and they disagree with. It's okay to talk to them. Half the reason why Charlie is doing such a great job, he goes and talks to everybody on these campuses. You think it's easy being on the other side? What is the possibility of somebody doing something to Charlie? It takes courage what this Turning Point USA organization does on a regular basis with these kids. It takes a lot of courage. So, I'm down to my last three minutes here. And I got, I got a bunch of other things, but I'll just wrap it up here with a couple points. And we'll send it off and, and go from there. You know, for me, um, there's different ways that we can contribute, all of us. Some of you are here, you get to contribute with time. You don't have money. You're like, look, I don't have any money, but I'm 19 years old. I can contribute with time. Awesome, do it. Some of you may be retired and you have some money, but you can contribute with your time. You can't speak like Charlie Kirk, or you can't speak like Glenn Beck, or some of these incredible speakers, but you can give your time. Some of you don't have time, but you have money. That's one way you can give money to whatever different programs he's working with or anything else you're doing. You can give with money. But some of you guys that have a voice, this next few years, I am convinced. I'm so convinced. My favorite hat, slogan that we have on every one of our gears, it says future looks bright. I don't know why. I am so optimistic about what's about to happen next. I think we're going to see a movement of some of the most incredible leaders being born during these chaotic times. We're going to meet leaders where we're going to sit there and say, where did, where did he come from? Where did she come from? What was this all about? We needed to have a massive 
crisis for us to wake up and realize what was worth fighting for in both free They say there's nothing in the world as powerful as an idea whose time has come. Welcome to Sleepyville, where no one sleeps deeply. The pillows are bad and the sheets are made cheaply. <coughs> but there is one family in the Sleepyville town that uses my pillow for the best sleep around. My pillows are adjustable for proper alignment, and the Giza sheets breathe so they feel no confinement. So order my pillow for great sleep refinement. Why are they so chipper? Their co-workers wondered. So much energy and zest, like they've had the best slumber. And when they peeked in the window, the secret was clear. My pillow sheets, pillows, and mattress toppers appeared. My pillow is breathable and lasts more than 10 years. It's washable and dryable and was manufactured right here. Giza cotton is what makes the softest of sheets, and the mattress topper helps support pressure points for deep, dreamy sleep. So click the link below to stop counting sheep. We want my pillow! The citizens of Sleepyville cried, but they didn't realize the family had a surprise inside. They were all given a my pillow to keep. We spent a third of our life snoozing, so let's make it quality sleep. Yeah! I got towels too. And mine are blue. So welcome to my pillowville where everyone sleeps on the pillows that align in the softest of sheets. With the support of the mattress topper, the people snooze deep and wake up well rested and their deadlines they keep. So if your bed feels like rocks and your sheets feel like Brillo, you need better sleep, which means you need my pillow. So what are you waiting for? Go ahead, click the button. I'm tired of rhyming, so please click it and save me. Please, I can't rhyme anymore. Just click that link. Stop watching this and click the link to get the best sleep of your life. Right side broadcast.